So I want to talk to you quickly about Joseph. Somebody say Joseph. I haven't walked with a mic with a wire and a. I. It makes me. I'm used to it, but it brings me back old school, like when my mother and them were preaching back in the day. I, I always wanted to do this while I was on stage. So I got that out. I'm good. All right. I just wanted to do that on stage and not feel like I was disrespecting God. Okay. Okay. Got that out the way. Now, I want you to, we have a, a mixture of people in the room, and I want you to, um, I want you to, um, right now, put yourself in the place of Joseph. A lot of times when we, um, I don't want to be too churchy tonight, but I want to be, I want you to hear me. Um, Joseph is a, a um, he is a strange character in the Bible, um, not because he's, um, not because he's weird. Um, he starts out as a boy with a dream. Okay? Starts out as a boy with a dream, but then he winds up as a man in leadership. Um, so I want everyone to hear me that your spiritual future has to start as a vision. You never start out as a leader. If you start out as a leader, something's wrong. There's nobody in the world who knows that at the age of five and six that they would be president. No one starts out and says, I'm going to own IBM. No one starts out. I don't care who we're looking at as our billionaires today. They never woke up, got to the age of knowing and said, I'm seven. Uh, I'll be worth 20 billion. You always have to start with a vision. Uh, what is a vision? A vision is a forecast of your future. It is a for, it's a, 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 when I say forecast, I want you to think of someone that's predicting weather, but that weather has not hit yet. They say it's going to rain. They're not 100% sure. They're just measuring up what they were taught. In vision, you're just, you're just, you, what you're doing is displaying or saying what you saw. It, it, people have visions in different ways. Um, I want to, uh, I don't want to break the stuff down to you this way, but visions and dreams are completely different. Some people need to wake up. They're dreaming. That's not a vision. Okay. Because visions come from a source. Dreams could come from bad food. You know, um, in our culture, we tell people, don't eat pork and go to bed. You, we have dreams and we say, you must have ate some pork chops. Um, in this today's culture, because our young people, um, you must have had some bad fast food. Don't eat McDonald's and all that grease and go to bed. You will have some type of dream. And that ain't God in the dream. You know, some people, you hear they dream, they dream about they rode on a horse and, and they, they were, a falcon was following them. And they, they, they always want to ask the pastor what those dreams mean. It means that you ate a Big Mac and then laid down. It's not a dream from God. Somebody say Amen. Andrew, you ate way too much stuff, okay, too much fried food before you went to sleep. Uh, so um, Joseph has visions. He has a vision. He has a vision. But telling, telling the wrong people your good vision will get you in trouble. Um, say that again so y'all can say amen. Um, telling someone too early that you like someone will get you in trouble. You know, that, that, that's about more on your level, right? Yeah. Telling someone you got feelings, was, oh, I think I like her. And they go, hmm, oh, yeah, hmm. <laughs> How could I mess this up? Because what happens is, what happens, you are planting seed in the belly of someone who has uh, uh, ought against you. You cannot plant in, in a field that does not belong yeah. to you. 
Um, you cannot plant you cannot plant a seed in something that is that has dead soil. Mm -hmm. The soil has no nutrients. And what happens is that a lot of times friendships are friendships are they're not ruined. They're actually brought uh, to the forefront by what you find out. Uh, you find the truth out by taking that live seed and planting it in a dead friend. You take a seed of love or you take a seed of something and you plant it in someone and you get nothing in return. Matter of fact, it's very easy to find out who loves you and who doesn't by who nourishes your vision. You'll find out that a lot of people won't nourish your vision. They will start to de they'll start to pick at it and tell you, well, maybe that won't work. Maybe you shouldn't do it that way. How are you getting in my God-given vision and telling me how it's going to work? Because when I saw it, I didn't believe it myself. You didn't see, I didn't, I didn't see, you, how can we ever see what God says? As a matter of fact, how can anybody have, I remember when Apple was Macintosh. But if there was no vision for a Macintosh, there would have been no Apple. See, Macintosh they had an apple, but they didn't name it apple. They named it Macintosh. But Macintosh didn't work. The apple did. Y'all still ain't get it yet. It had to start somewhere and grow. If there was no Macintosh vision with a picture of an apple, it would have never been apple. Y'all get what I'm saying? But we don't need nobody saying you can't do none of it. Well, maybe you should rethink that. See, I remember when Macintosh, the computer, what the reason why they made it is because it was the first computer that was one unit. It was just one unit. It was one unit. Well, guess what? That didn't work at first, but it came back around, and now we call it iMac. Oh, y'all, man. The iMac, it was a vision of Macintosh. But it did not work. It had to be transformed. But only the visionary. What happens, we get people to talk us down and go, you should maybe name it a pear. What if that same vision was a blueberry? <laughs> what if that same vision, they said, call it bacon? Everybody loves bacon. Right? No, we do love bacon, brother. I love ba bacon. But I'm not buying a bacon computer. Right. Every product I have is called Apple. Right. Because Apple needed to be a vision that went forward. Yeah. What's in you that someone's talking down? Something very small. Uh, something, you know, before we ever had an apple, we had a seed. What, what is someone talking down in its seed stage? that you're letting them kill it because there's no fruition to it yet. What are you letting people say to you that hinders you from becoming great? What are you doing? What are you hearing people say about your spiritual walk? Yeah, you want to be a preacher? You? Not you. You? Oh, no, you got too many hang-ups. Most of the time, people don't want you to have a vision because they know your defaults. Your defaults and your faults. They know them. They know where you're weak at. They know what happens to you when you get let down. Most of the time, you got to watch. The first people that will ruin your vision is your family. Y'all yeah, quiet in here, but I'm going to keep on going. The first people that will talk you down is the people that know you best. Everybody's not for you. Everybody is not for you. People are for the you they can handle, not for the you you're going to become. And when you, when you figure out how to break the mold, when you figure out how to get off their leash, then they no longer want to be associated with you. People only love what they can control. And when they cannot control you, then they don't want you at all.
And now you'll find them, they'll display every negative thing about you, and they won't say it head on. They'll just send signals and impulses to people around you because they want to keep you hindered. Vision is the only thing that frees you. Before a man can break out of prison, he has to envision it. You can't break out of prison just like, I'm getting out of here today. Ah! No. You got to chart. You got to chart your course. You got to know what opens at what time. You got to know when guards get off. You got to understand all those things. You have to have a vision of getting out of bondage. I'm setting myself up. You have to have a vision, whether it's right or wrong. Vision works both ways. Vision works for robbing a bank. Vision works for you stealing uh, um, um, through, through, through the internet. Vision works, you must now see it before you have it. If you cannot envision what you want to accomplish, you'll never have it. We cannot allow, we cannot allow God's people to think that God is just going to give you a pie in the sky. Well, that's an old slavery lie. They wanted us to believe that, so we always stayed bound to a, to a great notion, but never living out a vision. Once you figure out that a vision, I, every vision needs wheels. I need you to say that. Every vision needs wheels. You know what that means? That means you can have a vision all day long, but until you put transportation to that vision, that vision stays right in front of you. Oh, I saw this. You know what we could do? The biggest thing, the biggest thing hang up to, to, to Christian groups is that everybody comes up with a great idea, but nobody puts the wheels to it. We should feed the homeless. How? You sleep at the times we should be feeding. Who's feeding them? You know what we should do? We, we should gather our money and, and, and go buy turkeys for Thanksgiving and give them out. You got five dollars. <laughs> now, if you're not willing to part with that five and get more, how? Great ideas are spoken by lazy people. Wow. Uh, why am I doing this tonight? Because, because that's that's that's. Thank you, thank you. Put that up there, CJ, from me. Put that up. These are my people talking back to me. Great ideas spoken by lazy people. Right? Because it's easy for me to t give you something to do and never attempt it. It's easy for me to say, you are wowed by my speech, but not my action. Right? And the Bible says, faith without works is dead. The Bible never talks about people who speak well. So it says swelling words don't last. People who speak swelling words, they, they don't last. Um, you know, some people, um, you know, some people, we, we watch people... Um, uh, blow up overnight, overnight success. And it's really not that success, it's their swelling because they're infected. Most infections swell. You, you, you think that people are blowing up. Oh, they blew up overnight, son. No, they didn't. They're sick. They're infected. The, you know how they blew up? Because they had to be naked. Kim Kardashian blew up overnight. What's her talent? Tell me. Anybody? What does she do? <laughs> What's the Kardashian girl's talent? No, I'm serious. I'm not being funny. If you ever think about this, I want, you know why? Because young people look at them, do commercials and do all this stuff, and they see the, they see the them that they never was. So what's their talent? can't say sex because she didn't get paid for it. She just got shown. That's true. Wow, that's true. I'm, I'm asking you, you know why? The mother had a vision. She took their tragedy and made it a success. They weren't models until the sex video came out. Who wanted them? You, uh, you got to understand something. It don't take talent to be famous. They swelled. Yeah, they swelled. They swelled. They're not as famous as they used to be. They're not all over everybody's magazine. They didn't have a long-standing st career like that. But they did something. Because someone had a vision to their travesty. And it just happened to be their mother. 
there was a deal made. So we're young people in here, right? Well, I ain't young. But y'all young people, y'all need to understand all of this so you can put this and put it in the gospel of Jesus Christ and win people because you know information. That they, they made a deal off of that sex video. They didn't take it down. What mother would let uh, websites, pornography websites, keep that up and not put an injunction for everybody that showed that? They made a deal. So someone wants to make a deal over your travesty because they got a vision against you. Someone would love to take help and make something else. Someone would love to take your voice and your talent and all the things that you could do. And you're up here singing and singing the praises of God. Hallelujah. Great. But someone will come in here, hear that song, and you ain't copyrighted it, and they'll take it because they got a vision. Y'all hear me? You see what I'm saying? We're going somewhere. Joseph has a vision, and he tells his brothers. And because of that, he gets put in a pit. Oh. Joseph has a vision. He has a vision. He has a vision about what's going to actually happen. And it does happen. But he shouldn't have said anything. But he thought he was doing the right thing because he told his family. I want you to get um, turn to Genesis. Mm. Let's go to Genesis 37 and maybe 28. I can skip some of that stuff. Genesis 37, right? Genesis 37, right? 37. Somebody say hallelujah. Let me feel good like I'm in church. Um, let's look at. Let's look at. Um, let's do verse. Twenty-five. I'm going to read in the Amplified Classic because it's a little clearer. I'm going to start at twenty-five. And they sat down to eat their lunch, when they looked up. They saw a certain caravan of Ishmaelites, mixed Arabians, coming from Gilead with their camels bearing gum, uh, a striax tree, balm, the myrrh, um, landin, landium, going on their way to carry them to Egypt. So it really was a spice trader, okay? That's what it was. And Judas said to his brothers, what do we gain if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? What do we get for killing our little brother? We want to kill him, not because he hit us, not because he, he did anything to hurt us. We want to kill him because we don't like his vision. Because in his vision, we're subject to him. Can I stop right here, park right here? If you're not anybody who's going to be the savior of your family, if you're going, if some of you are in school, saying, I want to make my family better. I want to do this. You're always going to look like the enemy. You're going to look like you're trying to make your family bow down to you. There is no way you can help a person without them becoming subject to what you say. And most of the time, especially in our culture, anything that's colored and tinted, um, most of the time, we can't take someone arising and us bowing down so we can get help. Usually what we say is, oh, you're getting a big head. Oh, something different. about. Oh, what you want now? Oh, and we cannot take it. Why? Because someone has to assume a role so they can pick us up. Man, y'all not hearing me. Let me tell you, as long as I stand on stage, none of y'all are even with me. But it's not until I pick you up from where you are. I got to pull you so you can be even with me. And what we think is in the process of me pulling you up that I'm taking lordship over you. Somebody say amen. amen. Listen, a tutor has to help a student who's having trouble. So the tutor has to take the role of a teacher. There's no such thing. Uh, there's really no such thing as a tutor in the Bible is a teacher. Tutor and teacher are the same thing. Or tutor and master. Someone has to master you. 
to help you. Uh, I'm going to say that again. Someone has to master you to help you. If you do not, if you do not, um, if you do not bow down to me and what I'm saying, I can't help you. You want me to help you on your terms. That's not help. You, you understand what I'm saying? It's like a person who deals with drugs saying, I know how to get off. I know what I'm doing. No, you don't, sweetheart. No, you don't, brother. If you do, why are you still doing it? Let me help you. Let me put you, point you in the right direction. Joseph should not have told him the dream, but this is a part of God's plan for learning. Anything that's in the Bible, once you see um, parts of the story that, do you ever read the Bible and parts of the story don't agree with you? Parts of the story don't agree with you, you don't like it because it's teaching you about you. Whatever, whatever you're reading in the Bible and you start to go, oh, I wouldn't have done that. Yes, you would. You're not in the situation. You would have done it. That's why your, your spirit man is disagreeing with it. You don't like it. You want to read on. You want to pass it. Why? Because God is trying to have you park there so he can show you in your life, watch your mouth. Stop talking so much. You know, anything, when I start talking, if I set up here and start talking about flesh and stuff we do that we shouldn't do. Oh, boy. See? Not quiet, guy. Y'all know what I mean by flesh? Dating and, and it going out and, and, and then it leading to the wrong thing. Yeah. It, come on, somebody. Just say amen, everybody. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, having fun in school. Yeah. You know, making sure that you came a long distance away from home. Yeah. Nobody can look over your back. Yeah. You, you making sure that you don't go back and forth, that you dorm in school. Because you want to make very sure. I don't care if this is a Christian school. I don't care if this school was a, 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 a school of nothing. A, a, the book of Revelation school. It don't matter what it is. Y'all not hearing me. There's a whole world out there that once you leave here, you can do whatever you want to do. There's nobody watching you. You, you understand what I'm saying? And you got to be able to agree with everything that comes to help you. And someone has to master you. Someone has to tell you, baby, don't get involved. Not him. Not her. Mm -mm. No. Maybe. Mm. You have a master. That's why you have a guidance counselor. You have a counselor. Someone to help you with even a list of, you can't come to school. You can't even pay for school and take all the classes you want. It's not their money. You probably didn't even get that. You need someone to tell you, okay, you can take this, this, and this, and this, and you can. this is your elective. So I pay for every class, and I only get to really choose one. Okay. Oh, trying to hurry. Here we go. Where did I stop at? And so now, uh, let's look at 26. So, and Judah which means praise. Y'all church people, y'all should know that. And praise said to his brothers, what gain do we have if we slay our brother? We, I'm glad praise stood up for him. I'm glad some type of praise stood up for him. Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, the Midianites, these mixed Arabians who were approaching and let not our hand be upon him for he is our brother in our flesh. Now you're figuring out, now you're saying, He's our brother in our flesh, but y'all threw him in the pit. Now, let me uh, uh, let me finish this now. Um, and so, so okay, so they sold him. The Midianites uh, were merchants passing by, blah blah blah. Then they pulled Joseph out and they lifted him out of the well. I got something to say right there. And they sold him for twenty pieces of silver to the Ishmaelites, who took Joseph captive to Egypt. I want to stop right there. Now. Lord, help me. When I was looking at this, I, I, I wanted you to understand that the Midianites were actually relatives of the Israelite family. They're actually the cousins. They are, they are uh, Midian is a son of Abraham through his wife Keturah. Midian is a cousin. Midian's name also means strife. Okay? 
Midian means strike. It, it represents strike. Okay. Uh, Joseph was not pulled out of the pit by a brother, but it was strike that pulled him out. When you are a person of vision, God is going, is going to allow the opposite to save you. It is because you went to jail, you learned your lesson. It is because you got into a car accident, you don't drink no more. It is because of something evil. What, but see, evil, what happens is when you are a person that are, is, is, has a God future, what has meant to be evil turns to be your good. What was meant for your evil, God saves your life with it. No one has a story unless evil was present. Y'all didn't hear me. It, it, evil has a way to tell you who you really are. Mm. Evil, evil reveals the good. Evil pulls back the veil of good and displays the good. Um, uh, Joseph is in a pit. His brothers don't think anything of him um, to even help him get out of the pit. They don't want to touch him after they throw him in because now guilt has set in. Now, let me tell you something about the pit he was thrown in. He was thrown in a well that was dried. Man, you got to thank God that when the devil threw you in the pit, that it didn't have any water in it because you didn't drown. He only could throw you in a dry place that was just a suspension until God got you out of what you were put into. I need someone to praise God that it could have been worse. Just look at your neighbor and say, it could have been worse. So instead of God letting you drown, he put you in a dry place. You might have been thirsty, but you weren't drowning. All right. And so they were in a, a he was in a dried well, a well. He was in a dry place. Um, that doesn't work well when we say he was put in a well, but it was dry. Usually wells have water. Um, but this is the opposite of what God wanted to do. He wanted, Joseph always represented um, more than enough. His father always gave him more than enough. He was walking around with a coat of many colors. He had more than enough. He had more than enough dreams and visions. He had more than enough. This is the first time he experiences dry. This is the first time he's experiencing um, real suffering. Um, God, I always, I just said that God will give you the opposite so he can save your life. Um, so he would not look like he was enjoying this and the rest of his brothers. Only one brother really stood up for his life. And so he had to look like he was suffering in the dry place. Midian comes, lifts him up, and puts him on a spice carriage. This is a spice carriage. This is a carriage that is getting ready to go to Egypt, Egypt to do trading with Midian, the people of Midian, his family, his cousins in some type of way. You have to thank God that God sent an enemy to save your life from family. Okay. I'm saying some stuff. I want you to hear me. That sometimes family is not strong enough to do anything for you but complain about you. So God has to send an enemy. Someone who really doesn't care nothing for you, but they're going to pull you out your current situation before your, your family thinks about something else to do to you that will wipe out the vision of God in you. I don't want you going to that school. I don't want you over there. I don't want you going to that church. I don't want you doing those things. That's a little bit too much. And in your head, you're going, but I could be getting high. I could be drinking and sleeping with everybody who's available. Yet you don't want me going to church where I'm not doing none of that. Just because you don't like what I do and who I believe in. God has to save you from family. Make you look crazy. Most of the people that go to church and their family doesn't, y'all look crazy. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. 
And so I got, everybody wasn't raised up in church like I was. I didn't look crazy going to church. My mother was the pastor. <laughs> I look crazy not going. You, you understand? And so a lot of times, God has to make you look crazy so he can spare you. He has to make you look like you're overindulging in the spiritual realm. Just make you look like, what's all that y'all be doing in there? What's all that you're doing? Well, would you rather me be doing that with a pipe in my mouth? Um, I could do this and not come back from it. There's no one that ever praised God and lost their mind. But these new drugs now, you can smoke one thing and be wanting to beat, eat dogs and, and bite people's noses off. I don't know what this mess y'all messing with. H25 and the weed got numbers now instead of just being marijuana. <laughs> Chemical 9 and all this stuff. What is this stuff? And y'all just smoking it freely. Yo, son, look at him. He jumping off trees and climbing around like monkeys. And this is the stuff. And people would rather you have a good time with friends than be in church. It is a Friday night and no one's getting the praise of their family for being in church. What family members call you go, I'm proud of you for being in church tonight. They may not know. But if you was at a party and, and put it on Facebook, they're like, yo, son, this is lit. Yo, we drinking? There's 15 gallons of vodka here. Y'all see y'all not with me. Y'all going to tell the truth? You got a way out who's on your side for real. You got a way out. Where is your life going? What's your vision? What are you looking at? Here goes Joseph. I don't need that no more. Here goes Joseph. He's now on a he's on, now he's on a spice trade. He's going all the way down to Egypt. But God intended Egypt for him when he was telling his vision. His vision would have never helped his brothers if he stayed around. He needed to get out of there. Man. So maybe God made him open his mouth. Because if he didn't open his mouth, he would have stayed. And he would never been the deliverer of his family. So God needs a way. So my message is God is finding a way to use you. I need you to say that. God is finding a way to use me. All things work. All things work congruently together for my good. So even me being thrown in a pit works. Even my brothers hating me works. Even me telling you something and you don't like it, it works. Because it's got to work to get me to Egypt. Now, Egypt does not represent peace. Egypt represents something that I don't know. It represents the unknown. The only one who knows, my, who, who knows what I'm going to do in Egypt is God. My brothers don't know. My brothers have in their mind that they got rid of me to the point where they tell my father that I was killed. So what I'm trying to tell you young people is this. Because you have a vision, the people who love you are going to finish you off and make you look like you were completely crazy and you don't exist. Just so, and what they are doing is giving you time to process with no more pressure. When Joseph, hear me, and I'm almost done. When Joseph leaves Egypt, there is no more pressure from family. There, it, there is no more pressure from my brothers because what I see. I can freely see now. I have to deal with what I'm seeing or what I saw, and it has to now come to fruition. And I don't have to deal with negative people, my family talking about me, because now I'm on my way to Egypt. I'm on my way to a place, by the way, of a spice trader. These spice traders, now hear this, these spice traders, the stuff they had on is very important, but I can't get into all that. They're taking what's on there represents who Joseph is. Joseph is not going to Egypt to change it, he's going to spice it up. He doesn't change leadership. He just makes it better. Do I have anybody in here who uses hot sauce? Who uses hot sauce? Some of y'all don't use hot sauce? I'm, okay. That's enough people who use hot sauce. If you're, if you're from, if you're from um, Spanish descent, whatever, whatever you may be. You, you, there's this little, 
Yeah, there's this little thing that I get that they give you when you get baked chicken. It's green, but they got, sometimes they put garlic and cilantro, whatever it is. Yeah, whatever you said. <laughs> Don't try to get me to say it. Sasserede, whatever. Right? Okay. <laughs> no, it's not sasson. I know what sasson is. It's a, it's, it, 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 is, it is oil and something else. And, and then they have, I like, I'm, I don't like the red hot sauce, um, the one they give you. I like the green hot sauce. Yeah. Anybody like, I like, it just has more flavor to me. I, I, I like hot, but I like flavor. Yeah. Okay. Now, the, when you put hot sauce on chicken or whatever you put it on, it's not to make your chicken, um, it's not to season it. Because your chicken should be seasoned already. Come on, uh, yeah. <laughs> Come on now, because yeah. you can put hot sauce on chicken and it still be bland. Yeah. And you'd be like, "Nah, son, you're not hiding that. There's nothing on this chicken, right?" But good hot sauce, just add that right spice, that kick to it, not to burn your tongue out your mouth, but just to add that right little thing that just puts it over the top, right? Okay, that's Joseph, and that's you. God is, man, college students, everybody in here. God did enough in you just to make you whatever, wherever you're added to, just make it a little bit better. You kick it over the top. You, you, you. Red Hot has never been the star of the show. It just added something to it. Okay, yeah, yeah, whatever, Red Devil, whatever you use, Tabasco, whatever sauce you use, it's never been the star of the show. The star of the show is the chicken. Right, right. The star of the show is your steak. Uh -huh. If that ain't the star, then you ain't got nothing. Yeah. You might as well just eat some hot sauce. Yeah. Nobody wants hot sauce by itself, though. Nobody. So nobody really wants Joseph by himself. Joseph needs Egypt, and Egypt needs Joseph. And I'm trying to tell you something. That the world needs you, and you need the world. You need to change something. You need to add to something. Can I get a witness in here? Your family needs you, but they don't need the old you because you wasn't spicy enough. You know, I watched, I watched how they make hot sauce. I watched how they age the spices, how they take the peppers, and they let them sit in the room. And they let, it, they let the peppers get concentrated because if they don't let it sit long enough, it ain't hot. Man, Lord... The more you let the pepper sit in the room, the more it concentrates, it dries out. A dry pepper is much more concentrated than a pepper you just pick. Man, that can almost be a tongue twister. Um, you, you, you need something to dry out and to age. Everybody wants age, age liquor, not new liquor. Age liquor is what, what how, do you, you, um, how do you get wine? You make wine and you got to let that grape juice sit. Because if you squeeze a grape and drink it, you didn't have wine. You had grape juice. And some of you, you want God to use you, and you're not wine, you're juice. Y'all didn't. Y'all didn't. You're not. You understand? You're just juice. You look like wine. You have the, you have the ingredients of wine, except age. So here we go. Joseph gets down to Egypt. And he don't go right to the top. He has to ferment. Like the spices that it, all them spices had to ferment. They had to wait. They had to be dried and then ground. And so now his, he's on a, he's on a spice, he's on a spice trading um, mechanism to get him there. But he's aging and drying out. And now the next process is him being ground. Ground down to a powder. So he could be sprinkled. Don't you understand that if I grind you down, if I grind you down and put you through rigorous turmoil, I can spread you more. And a little bit of everything can have a fragrance of you in it. Yeah, am, am I saying some stuff? God is trying to take young people, age them in the spirit, and sprinkle them over the earth. Your vision, God is trying to get what's in you, out of you. Now, I want to give you this. I don't want to forget what I, 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 God had put down in my spirit for you. Um, 
Uh, and then I'm going to pray and we'll be done. Um, here. Now, they're going down. His brothers he won't see anymore, right? Now, they sold Joseph. Hear this, man. This is crazy. They sold jo Joseph for 20 shekels of silver. Somebody say 20 shekels of silver. They sold him. They got rid of their brother for some money. But I want you to look at this. According to Leviticus 27 and 5, 20 shekels is the standard value for setting free a vow or a slave. I, I didn't want to give you no deep, uh, you know, historical value in Leviticus for, for y'all, but I want you to see what God did. What God actually did was he set him free. Man, y'all. Strife paid his brothers. Y'all yeah. quiet. Strife yeah. paid the price yes. Yes. for a vision to be free. Come on. I'm going to say that again. Okay. I see y'all writing it down. Right. Strife paid the price for vision to be free. Strife. Some of you are trying to run away from the turmoil in your life and the, the strife and the stuff against other people. God has sent it to set you free from your bondage to people. Amen. Young people in this room, I want you to hear me. Y'all don't know my testimony. You don't know, and I don't have time to tell you all of it. I was a very successful young man producing music for top people in this world. Mm -hmm. Trust me when I tell you. Really, I got a discography that's very long. I worked with Boys to Men, Mary J. Blige, you name it. Okay? I learned this one thing, that you will never be great until there's confusion in your life. Yes. If you keep trying to run away from, com from confusion, you will stay in it for the rest of your life. Wow. It is the people who keep trying to solve the riddle of friendships that never have them. There are some people in your life that you need to let go and say, I love you, but that's it. Because if I'm going to follow a vision, I can't have you with me. Because when I lay my, my head down and I see what God has for me, you're not in it. Neither are you seeing what I see. And the only person you want is the person you can hold. And if I follow, every vision has a wing, has wings. And if you hold on to me, I can't fly. All I can do is walk with you. And I can't save a soul walking with someone who's grounded. You want me, you want the interpretation of me that you can handle. But I am growing. I am turning into something else. You know what confuses the butterfly? I mean, you know what confuses the caterpillar? What confuses the caterpillar? The cocoon. He's never seen it before. I'm going to say this again. A caterpillar, something starts to happen to him that he does not know. Now, there's billions of caterpillars that went through this stage, but they never turned around to explain to their friend, you're getting ready to go through a cocoon. They never can explain it. So why are you trying to explain to your friends what's happening to you? The changes happening to you. The different mindset. The different things you're learning at night. The things you're looking at. You are going through a process of a cave. Because God is putting you in a hiding place to change your appearance. To change your mindset. You do not own the same mindset that you had three months ago. Every three months you change. I won't get into this. Every three months for a young person, they start to change. They start to learn something different. They learn a new concept. You learn a new way to do things. You have to grow up, and I'm not being disrespectful, but you grow up to the point where now you learn that your mom and dad were wrong about stuff. And the way they told you to do stuff doesn't work for you. It only worked while you were young and obedient. But you found another way. 
That's not wrong. Yo. When you get older, you saw your father take one way home until you learn that you can take this way and that way and that way. You never learned that your father don't like turns. So you thought that this was the only way and this was the right way. But because you like to take turns and you'll take a chance, you take the other way. And you get home faster than your father. For you young ladies that learn to cook from your mother, you learn that you don't need as much butter. Nobody talking back to me? Y'all don't cook? Okay. You don't need everything in that recipe that her grandmother gave her. Because when her grandmother had the recipe, all they had was butter. Do you, you understand what I'm saying? Do y'all get what I'm saying? And so God starts to use you as you grow. Let me finish here, but I don't want to bore you. So now he's, 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 Joseph is in Egypt. I'm not preaching to Joseph that became a leader. I'm preaching to Joseph that we are all right now. We are people who are becoming. We still don't know when he gets to Egypt, we, don't, we still don't know he's going to be number two. Because he hasn't been to prison yet. He hasn't been accused of rape yet. He has to go up, then be dropped down, then go back up again to be permanent. We're not talking about, we're talking about the Joseph who's looking around going, I'm in Egypt. I'm in a place where I've never been before. I don't know nobody. And I'm, I'm a Hebrew. So when I get here, they're making me shave. I don't know what shaving is. I have never shaved before. <sighs> My last point is this. When God is getting ready to use you, you got you, you to gotta lose your identity. If you still want to be the person that you want to look in the mirror and know, I know who I am. I know, oh, yeah, I know who I am. And God can't use you. You got to be, you have to be willing to lose your original identity to become something that you're not used to. Joseph has to be hairless. As, a, as, as, as just, just coming into Egypt, they're going to shave him before they can use him. They're going to take all his hair off. He has to adjust to the custom. How many of you have studied the custom, the custom of sin? We've done sin. We ain't studied why we did it. Do you, do you know why you drink? Do you know where drinking comes from? How can you help alcoholics? Stop saying I'm going to be, oh, I'm going to help what I'm involved in. Oh, I, 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 yeah, I used to smoke and sleep around. I'm, do you know why? Do you, do you, do you, have you understood why? Can I, can I ask you a question? What follows you in your family? Have you ever studied that? Have you ever studied why women, why one lady in the family may have problems with fibroids, then it just keeps going, boom, 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 boom. Have you ever understood why cancer cells are in family, and then the uncle has it, then the cousin has it, then this one has it, boom, 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 boom. Have you ever understood that? If you don't understand that, if you haven't looked into that, look into it. If you haven't looked into the spiritual realm of it, why is all the women in our family depressed? Why are they moody? Why are we so mouthy? Why are the men just in and out of jail all the time? Why the every, bro, every guy in my family wants to hang on the block? That's not normal. That's not normal for a man to be on the block all day. But my family does it all the time. You ever ask that? Why is the men always angry? Why are they so angry? Just angry at everything. Could be successful and still be angry. What is this component? That's following me. You can't deliver what you don't know. Exactly. Is this too much, Freedom? You cannot, you, you, you cannot excuse the reason why, who you are. Oh, my mother was like this. So what? It don't make your mother right. It makes, it, that's the reason why she spends so much time at home. Because she knew she would not be accepted. We have to get out of this. We got to know why God wants us. He wants us because you're valuable. He also wants you because you got a problem. He didn't pick Israel because they were great. They played a harlot on every hill. That's the word. 
They wanted other gods like us. God delivers us. Now, can I be real? God does stuff for us, right? We tell God, I'll never do that again. Three and a half hours later, after that prayer, I didn't even say days. Three and a half hours. You sitting in your room like Pookie with that crack pipe. I tell him I'm gonna do it. Next thing you know, you out that room. You going on to where you 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 feel you're being drawn to. Why? Because there's something in you for the occasion of what God wants to use you for. He lets you experience this trait inside of you that your daddy had. I'm not going to say nothing. I'm not. I'm going to keep my mouth quiet. I ain't going to say nothing. Next thing you know, I just got to say what I saw in my mind. No, you don't. Who has been forced by their brain to open their mouth? Your brain doesn't hold a whip and start beating your tongue. Say it. Say it. No. It's all your will. You know what the dumbest thing people say? Pastors, oh, we was, we was saying we wasn't going to do nothing. And next thing you know, we just, you know, we just fell in, into sin. No, you didn't. You don't fall down taking your clothes off. What is this? You, what, oh, we just f wound up. You didn't, f you fell in the bed and all of a sudden there was nothing on? You, that was a plan, baby. Lights is down. TV's low. Come on, y'all ain't talking to me. I'm going to keep on. If y'all, I'm going to preach the whole truth now. I'm going to preach it all. Oh, pastor. I said I wasn't going to smoke no more, pastor. I wasn't going to smoke that no more. Next thing I know was just in my mouth. So the weed rolled itself up. Walked over to you. Stood on some stilts and applied itself to your lips and lit itself too. Mm, nah, you willed it there. You planned it. You brought it. You told God no, but you never threw it out. You said, I'm not doing that, but you kept your condoms. You know, there's always a, there's always a contingency plan for our wrong. Hey, boy, y'all did that. You can't have plan B and, and give God, you, 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 you can't have plan B still in your pocket. You, you, you got to, for God, you got to have no plan. You got to get rid of everything that you've got and tell the Lord, I'm going to do. Y'all not with me. I'm going to stay on this now. You can't be, Lord, it ain't just sex. It ain't just drugs. Sometimes you say, I ain't going to say nothing. I'm going to be right. I'm not going to open my mouth. I'm not going to. They're driving me, Jesus. They're driving me. They drive me to say it. Mm. Mm. I'm going to close my mouth. You start doing stuff like this. Mm. Mm. I ain't going to say nothing. Mm. You just said something. Mm. I ain't going to say nothing. Mm. You just said something again. But you could have walked away and took opportunity away from you. Am I talking true? We want to produce more help. Y'all, you hear me? Help is a ministry, but we want to produce more help. If we produce more help, then help will be all over the place. Hmm. God, hear me. God knows inside of you what he's going to pull out of you and what he has to do to get it out. Because what happens is this. Now, this is for everybody in the room. God knows how religious we are. He knows how traditional base we are. There are certain things that we will never, ever do. God don't ever have to get you for robbing a bank. He doesn't have to talk to you about that. But a person down the road might have a plan. Right? And so what he does, what he does is he gets the person who can plan a robbery, he gets them to plan a meeting, a service, help. He takes that and turns it around. And what we do as humans, we see their plans for a bank and go, don't use them. They're off. God says, no, they're good. I'm turning them around for my purpose. There's a vision in them that needs to be changed. So what God starts to do is change vision all around the room. 
And we're the last ones to see it in ourselves. So it takes someone else. It takes a person. It takes strife to bring stuff out of it. You know what Dave, well, you know what Joseph would have been if he was left there? He would have just been annoying. That's it. He would have just been annoying. The Bible says that he ran after his brothers to be a sheep herder. That he ran after them. He did not like vision. It left him lonely. So he ran to be what they were. And he was never anointed to be a sheep herder. But they were. Read about them. They became, they, be, they represented the 12 tribes. Right? They represented, they were used. They were used, but not like their brother. There's no tribe of Joseph, though. Where their history lasted for a long time, there's no tribe of Joseph. Joseph represents freedom during bondage. Will y'all all stand? I'm done.